Good morning. I'm Cheryl Action Jackson and welcome to the Cheryl Action Jackson show. I want to stop and say thank you so much to all of the emails we've been receiving, the phone calls of support, just saying you're glad that we're back on the air and we are delighted to be back on the air. In the first couple of shows, I actually introduced my Minnie's Food Pantry team and I'm so thankful that you all think they're as great as I think they are. But one person wasn't here and I want to introduce her before we go any further in any of our other segments. And I am so pleased to have on the Cheryl Action Jackson show, my sister, Lynette Schaffner. Hello, Lynette. Good morning, Cheryl. And welcome to the Cheryl Action Jackson show. Thank you for having me. Honored to be a guest. Well, in the other segments, we talked to my team, the team, and uh, you've just joined Team Minis. Team How Minis. are you feeling right now with the transition? I'm ecstatic about it. I absolutely love being there. I love the staff that already exists and everything y'all have already created. And I'm very happy to be on staff officially now as a part of Minnie's team. And for people who don't know, why, why didn't you join the Minnie's Food Pantry staff when I talked to you about it? I did not join when you asked me originally and you started it seven years ago, a little bit before seven years ago, because I worked exclusively with Minnie at the church um, where she pastored at. And so it was a hard decision not to come run and be with my sister and, and love on you. But I felt like I was needed more there at that time, and I wanted to be with her. And now that she has gone on to be with the Lord, I feel like I need to be with you for a little while, so I'm here with you. Oh, we're so glad you're here. And you get to work with Erica. What's that like? Um, and what's your title? What's your official title? My official title is the director of the pantry. So my, my job duties is just to make sure that the day-to-day the -day getting out food, bringing in food, turning over food, making sure that we have the product that we need in-house to be able to cover our people is done. And then the atmosphere and the attitude, I take that personal because of who mom was and who you are and who this staff is that has created this wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. I read the scripture this morning, the poor will be with you always. And I always look at that scripture as an attitude thing, like don't get upset because they're there. Go ahead and fix it. You know they're going to always be there. Right. Fix your attitude, fix your mindset to be able to take care of them and be prepared for them. And so when I come to Minis, I have learned from the staff that has already existed about having the right attitude when you walk in the door because we don't just represent um, Minis as we represent our community and humanity and the best part of that is being able to love up on our clientele. Fantastic and, and when we talk about our staff so I had Erica on, I had Zoya on, I had RJ on, we all have our different positions and so how have you been feeling gelling into your own position right now? Um, the good thing about this is that I've known your staff because I've volunteered and uh, I've been with them for a while. I volunteered back in the beginning and so I know their personality so it was very easy to come in and gel with them and they have done a good job of receiving me and my ideas and who I am as a person. And so they made it very, very easy for me to transition to feel like I'm a part of Minis and that's important to So me. I've been seeing you post on social media. You've been talking about the volunteers. Talk about some of the companies that have come through since you've been with us. It's amazing the companies and the connections that Minis has. Um, I love when the, the two banks was there, Capital One and Bank of America. Who knew they could work side by side? Side by side, I'm like, y'all can't cash any checks. We have all the banks in house. <laughs> and, the, and the weekend before that, or a couple of days before Chase was in. But I love the smaller groups that come in to. We had Reliance in on Saturday. We had um, Black Girls Travel too, which is an organization that just teaches you about traveling worldwide, not just in the states. And 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 then we've had some international groups that come in. We had exchange students that came in, and when we handed them their certificates, they were so excited. They was like, "It's the first one that we've received in the states." So they were very very excited about that. So we get to to meet all of these unusual people who represent different companies and groups, but we all have the same heart of serving God's people. Now I've seen you in the warehouse in the Wow Center. You've been there working a lot. Yes, and yes. And I've seen you pull out cans, did it cans. Some were, um, when you were going through them, some were expired. So talk to people about when they um, donate to Minnie's Food Pantry. What are you looking for? What makes a great donation? When they donate to Minnie's, I am looking for the product that you would give your child, that you would give your mother, that you would give someone that you absolutely love and adore. Um, then it cans we cannot use, um, expired food we cannot use. And so the same way that we want to feed our family the best and treat our family with the most up utmost respect and give them the best is what we want to be able to give out at Minis. And so I always tell people when we walk a group through, Miss Jackson has left you a message. If you look on the wall, the first thing that you see is presentation is everything. And it is everything for us to be able to send out a box that when people see it, they're excited about what they're giving. So it doesn't feel like that they're getting a handout, but they're just getting some love from some people who want to share today. Well, now you've met her. This is our pantry operations manager, director, excuse me, Lynette okay. Schaffner. And when we come back, we're going to tell you about a special program that Minis was just given a grant for. You don't want to miss this. We're so excited. Thank you, Lynette. Thanks for having me.
Local TV stations have started running public service announcements that tell people where to find food banks. Even as the food banks don't have enough to meet the demand. As we speak, similar scenes are playing out in cities and towns across America. Hey, what's up? It's Devon Franklin. I am producer of the film Miracles from Heaven. I'm here with your girl Cheryl Action Jackson, and she makes things happen. That's why they call her Action. So blessed to be with you. Don't touch that dial. I am so excited to be back here, and it's really excited when I look at my staff and the in the dreams that I have for Minnie's Food Pantry. And on April the first, it'll be eight years that Minnie's Food Pantry. We've been serving the community, and when we started, myself and RJ and Erica. We had so many different small conversations and small talk that was big thinking and big dreams, but we didn't know how they were going to come into existence. But as you start to see each one of my team members come in and they do a segment, you're going to see how these miracles began to unfold. Speaking of miracles, you just saw the commercial with Devon Franklin. Let me just tell you that he will be on our show, but um, Miracles from Heaven, which comes out on March the 16th, you want to go see that. And if they don't have tissue at the box office, take your own. This is just a warning. But for right now, we're going to talk about a very, very, very exciting initiative that Minnie's Food Pantry is having. It's called The Breakfast Club. And help me welcome R.J. Jackson Hello, and uh, Zoya, Zoya Jackson, um, to the program. And Zoya, uh, well, no, let me start with you, R.J., because The Breakfast Club is about kids, and it's about making sure that kids eat a healthy breakfast. And I'm so excited about that because we've talked about children when we talked about the Camille's Kids program. Mm -hmm. Talk about, that's your daughter? That's my daughter and so having a child the last thing that I would want is for them to be hungry and so um, due to that fact we're making sure that all families especially children are able to uh, be provided with a meal and during the mornings when they're going to school imagine this, uh, a child being in class and having a hard time maybe concentrating or focusing and wondering why and trying to get them under control so to speak and a lot of a lot of times a lot of those children haven't even ate breakfast and so you know how hard it is to even concentrate while you're while you're hungry it's hard to pay attention to anything it's hard to listen to anyone you have to satisfy that need and so we want to make sure that that need is met so that they can get the education pay attention closer and just make sure that that need is taken care of and so it's very important to make sure that the children are eating in in the morning and throughout the day, and we're grateful to be a part of this initiative. It's, it's amazing. And so for those of you who keep emailing me on Facebook and saying, I need you to teach me how you're doing what you're doing, I'm not just doing this. It takes a team, and it takes a community, and it takes corporate sponsors to do what I'm doing. And so part of my team here, Zoya, Zoya Jackson, you are responsible for not only taking care of the day-to-day -day operations with what happens <laughs> with me, which is enough within itself, but then you also write grants. And so they came to us about this particular grant. Tell me what they were looking for. So Albertsons, let's make sure. Albertsons and Hunger, and Hunger is. is. Yes. Um, so they were looking for an organization, organization that could really make an impact in the community and they wanted it to focus specifically on children. So it was pretty easy for us to come up with what we wanted um, to do if we were to receive the grant. So we came up with the Breakfast Club. Yes. Um, so what it is is basically we want to make sure that the children that come to Mini Food Pantry, they're guaranteed the supplies they need to go home and eat breakfast. A lot of them, there's about 9,000 kids in just Plano that are on the reduced lunch program or the free lunch wow. program. In Plano. So, in Plano alone. So um, we've um, identified families that come to Mini Sweet Pantry with children and we are going to give them everything they need to have nutritious breakfast at home. They're gonna get their, um, their milk, their cereal, their eggs, their um, you know, oatmeal, all that good stuff, their fresh produce, everything they need to go home and eat you know, a, so, a, a, a healthy meal. breakfast. And so what we're trying to also figure out and what Albertsons wants to know in the Hunger Is Foundation, they mm -hmm. want to know how many of these kids, if they had food, would actually eat breakfast. Because what we're finding out is maybe some people just don't eat breakfast, mm -hmm. but w the supply of food that we currently give out at Minnie's Food Pantry is not enough to last someone for the entire month. So through this breakfast club, we will be able to give them real hard statistics on 
children that are eating breakfast, why they did eat it. Maybe, maybe they ate it because we gave them Lucky Charms and last week we only gave them Frosted Flakes. We don't know the reasons, but through the gathering of these statistics, we will be able to give that to Albertsons and Hunger Is, and hopefully we'll be able to forge a partnership with them. Would, would you agree to that? That would be incredible. Um, like I said, what we have right now is specifically for 100 children, and we serve way more than that at Mini Sweet Pantry. So it would be incredible if we could do it for every kid that comes to the pantry. That would be, I think, the ultimate goal. And that's why it's, it's very important to me with this particular program mm -hmm. because there was a point in, in my life where when you see RJ over here that we weren't able to even feed our own children. So to be able to know for sure that we're going to provide families, especially kids, every single day it, as much as we can <laughs> with a breakfast item, I mean, this initiative is extremely huge. And so I'm really delighted that you're able to write up the grants. What's it like? submitting grants when you hit enter. What are you thinking? It's kind of like, um, you know, I can't explain the feeling. Um, you know, your heart starts beating and you start wondering, what if I do get it? What if I don't? Do I need to go apply for more? You know, backup plans is what you're thinking. But then you're also thinking, if this comes through, you can help X amount of people. You can provide, you know, so m many more meals to those in need in the community. So. Um, and, and, and to complete that sentence as well is that you didn't get it. You asked for a lot yeah. with this particular grant, and they didn't give us what we asked for, but then they came back. I love how God operates mm -hmm. like that. They came back and say, we don't have as much as you've asked for, but we do have, have this something. amount, so let us give this. And so, the, so for those of you who are asking, how do you do it? You just keep asking, and you keep surrounding yourself with a team of people that will help you get what you need. Robert, real quickly, and then we're going to bring in Cynthia Smoot. Whoa, she's got some great information. <laughs> but real quickly, I was with Camille and Camille was talking about all the kids needing to eat. Camille is four years old, your daughter. Mm -hmm. Speak to that of how she oh, knows God. that all the kids need to eat some type of breakfast or meal. <laughs> because she pays attention. And I think that's very important for all of us to pay attention to something outside of ourselves or someone outside of ourselves. And that's what we pride ourselves in doing is making sure that we take time out to care for the next individual. And so that's something that I'm definitely teaching my child and my children, and they watch, they pay attention. I watch, paid attention to you, my father, my Aunt Nettie, Erica, uh, Nancy, the people that we're having on, on the show, all these people, we come together in, in unity and to help one another. And so my daughter sees that no different than we saw it, and they implement and they duplicate what we do. And so she runs around saying, Daddy, I want to go to you, with you to the food pantry because we need to go feed people. Wow. <laughs> and she's four years old, but she understands that and she has a heart for caring. And so it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, you can make a difference where you are with what you have, even if it's just a smile. So, mm. well, well, very well said. I didn't even teach you to say that, but that, that's <laughs> fantastic. So if you're paying attention, then you saw. Log on to minisfoodpantry.org if you want to find out how ways you can help us log on, find a program that suits your needs. You can get $5, you can get 5000 you can get 50000 But give something. Start small and work your way really big. That's what we're doing right now, correct? Absolutely. Yes. All right, when we come back, we'll have Cynthia Smoot. Man, she's going to help us discover <laughs> Dallas. We'll be back yeah. in just a moment. <laughs> Local TV stations have started running public service announcements that tell people where to find food banks. Even as the food banks don't have enough to meet the demand. As we speak, similar scenes are playing out in cities and towns across America. We're back. <laughs> We're back, and I was just having a great time with my team and my staff and talking to Cynthia about everything crazy that's happening in Dallas. Help me welcome the lifestyle blogger. If you don't follow her, you need to. Miss Cynthia Smoot, Hello. welcome back. How are you? Good morning. It's, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad that you're here. You keep talking about Dallas. I see you, your blog, your Twitter feed and everything. What's happening in our city? Oh, my gosh. There, there's so much happening all the time, literally. I can barely keep up. So that's what I love to do is sort of take all the information, funnel it down, and bring right. you the nuggets, the best. <laughs> Stuff. And so there's some really fun stuff going on this next week. Um, next Wednesday on March 2nd, there's a really fun show coming to SMU's McFarland Auditorium, and it's called Vocalocity. Wow. Now, are you a fan of the movie Pitch Perfect? Haven't seen have it. Have you seen it? Or, no. Oh, or yes, I have. Yes, it's, it's a good movie. The TV Everybody's show Glee. So yes. it's sort of that kind. The producer of Pitch Perfect has actually put together this tour. 
Um, so there are vocal groups, and they're singing everything from doo-wop to Bruno Mars to Beatles. So really? a little something for everybody. It's going to be a super fun show for a girls' night out or the family. Tickets start at $25. That's very And you can get more information at the AT&T Performing Arts Center's website at attpac.org. That, that's going to be fun. Fantastic. What else you have for us? Well, I wanted to talk about, you know, as a mom, I'm always looking for fun things to do with my kids. And one of the city's hidden gems is, I think, the Dallas World Aquarium. Have oh, you ever been? Yes, yes. It's Wonderful. such a great little place. It's not too small. It's right. not too big. It's a really, like, fun, manageable place to spend an afternoon with your kids. They have everything from sharks to sloths to penguins to flamingos. So there's wow. a lot of different kinds of animals to see and get up close and I love that every 30 minutes, their staff member, they are either doing a live feeding, which I think is super fun, cool. um, especially the shark feeding. That's right. my favorite. Um, or they have a staff member that's doing a talk on a particular animal. So it's almost like story time. Okay. So whether you're 5 or 50, I just think it's a really fun way to spend an afternoon. It's downtown on Griffin Street off of the West End. Oh, fantastic. So it's centrally located, um, a fun way to spend a day with your family. Fantastic, fantastic. Any other things happening in Dallas? Well, you know, I'm a foodie. I'm a girl who loves to eat. So I thought today we'd talk about a fun new restaurant. Then what is it? What is it? Well, you know, I love shopping too. Okay, so right? shopping and food, like my two favorite things. Right? And at North Park Center, there's a great new restaurant called The Theodore. And it's um, opened by the people that own Smoke over at the Belmont Hotel. Okay. And it's, um, the theme is, it's all about Teddy Roosevelt. Which hmm. you're thinking, how do they do a restaurant right. around the 26th president of the United States? And how did they do it? Well, they, what they took was the inspiration of his spirit of discovery. So Teddy Roosevelt is the one that helped create all of our national parks and monuments. He was a real adventurer. Mm -hmm. And so they've incorporated that into the theme. It's really fun, quirky decor. There's hidden rooms, um, fun little things all around the restaurant. A great open bar with patio, really delicious food. So North Park Center, I just think, is an amazing place to go see great art, amazing shopping, and they're bringing in more and more really high-end, unique, fun restaurants, not just, you know, chains. Right, right. Um, so, so, you know, you can go to everything from the food court and get Chick-fil-A, but then they also have some nice sort of finer Phenomenal dining. Like and so the theater, yeah, I love Maggiano's, yes, but I think the yes. theater is a really fun new place to check out. Well, let me see this. Everybody was following you because we were trying to find out the real housewives of Dallas. Yeah. And they were following all of your blogs, <laughs> et cetera. And then they did the huge announcement. What do you think about the huge announcement? Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, Bravo finally came out, finally, and announced the cast. Two of my best friends are on the show. So I'm super excited. Leanne Locken yes. and Tiffany Hendra, two mm -hmm. of my dearest friends. So it's going to be so much fun. I'm just so happy that I can finally talk about it. What was that like having to hold that in, especially being a blogger and being the one that wants to tell the world everything? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I said I learned my lesson when I worked with Big Rich Texas. I can either be the blogger that like gets all the exclusive scoop and spills it first, mm -hmm. and then production gets really mad, and I got banned from the <laughs> from the set. No, did you really? And they told the cast not to talk to me, and it was like not good. Really? So I thought, you know, this time around, knowing that my friends were on it, I thought, you know, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to go along for the ride. I'm going to have some fun. And then I'll give you all my good stories as right, it happens. Right, right, right. So if you're into reality TV and the Real Housewives of Dallas, definitely connect with me at ososynthia.com because right. I'm going to have the most amazing behind-the-scenes photos and stories and scoop. And I just... It's going to be juicy. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be some drama. I bet it is. I know Leanne's <laughs> going to lay it on hard, isn't she? I know she laid well, it know, on hard. You have five extremely type over the A, over strong the top. women. Right. And they are not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe right? if you're having a disagreement. And that right there in itself is just going to be wait. good TV. I can't wait. Uh, and more good TV. We'll have them on. Uh, we're going to do an exclusive with them. We're going to do Pat and Emmett Smith. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Let me get this right. Mrs. Mrs. And Mr. <laughs> Smith is having a special on the OWN Network. Yes, Saturday, March 26th. Yes. So a Dallas, I mean, I'm telling you, a lot there's happening. a lot going on. A lot on. of good stuff. A lot so, of yeah, good stuff. So, so Mrs. and Mr. Smith will air as a one-hour special, depending on ratings. Um, right. Own is considering rolling it out as a as a new feature series. So we hope that everybody tunes in oh, Pat, to watch. We, I mean, Emmett Smith, everybody knows and loves. Yeah, Pat is kind of, you know, Pat's a little more in his shadow. This yeah, is really her anymore, time no. to come out. Right. America's going to fall in love with her. She's I agree. Amazing. I as, totally, I, totally. I know you and I know that. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait for everybody else to I totally figure agree. that out. I can't wait to do the special on them. We'll be having that coming <laughs> up really soon. And coming up next, if you're not into all the lifestyles of the rich and famous, but you're into giving back, 
Well, I've got some famous people that's going to come on to this show. Her name is Nancy Frazier. She's with Grace Presbyterian Church. And I have Miss Erica Simon, the director of operations. She's going to come in and tell you about this wonderful, wonderful collaboration between Minnie's Food Pantry and Grace Presbyterian Church. Please stick around. And thank you so much, Cynthia, for keeping us abreast on what's happening in Dallas. You're welcome. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Local TV stations have started running public service announcements that tell people where to find food banks. Even as the food banks don't have enough to meet the demand. As we speak, similar scenes are playing out in cities and towns across America. Hey, what's up? It's Devon Franklin. I am producer of the film Miracles from Heaven. I'm here with your girl Cheryl Action Jackson, and she makes things happen. That's why they call her Action. So blessed to be with you. Don't touch that dial. One of the things that I love about what we do at Minnie's Food Pantry is we have the opportunity to meet some phenomenal people. And as I said earlier in the show is that Minnie's Food Pantry and Shrill Action Jackson, we don't exist without the partnership and the friendship and relation. It's all about some ships, ships sailing through the night. <laughs> partnership, friendships, relationships with some of the most phenomenal people in our community. And one of the people that we've connected with is Ms. Nancy Frazier. And before I have her talk, our Director of Operations, Erica Simon, you've been responsible for scheduling a lot of incredible volunteers and partnerships at Minnie's Food Pantry mm -hmm. since day one. Talk about that, Erica. Well, it's very exciting because you get to connect, like you say, those relationships with great people who really genuinely have a heart to give back. And so for Minnie's Food Pantry to be the outlet for them to come out and serve and, you know, dive into our mission, it's, it's great. It's a fabulous thing for them. And we have a video that we want to show yes. about our partnership. Just thanking Grace Presbyterian. Yes. And then we're, after the video, we're going to come back and we're going to talk, talk to this wonderful lady. <laughs> Name is Nancy Frazier. Let's, ha let's watch the video. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Cheryl Action Jackson, and I'm founder of Minnie's Food Pantry in Plano, Texas. I wanted to say thank you to Grace Presbyterian Church, all of the members, and especially to Pastor Brian Stamper, who serves on our board of directors. I want to say thank you because as members, you have helped us transform frowns into smiles. And how do you do this? You've donated your time, you've donated financially, and we've been able to give out over 175,000 people healthy meals because of you. And we couldn't do it without you, so I pray that you continue to help us help others, and thank you again for helping us transform lives. So as you can see, partnership is so extremely important, especially with churches, because that's what we were called to do. I'm a PK, a preacher's kid, so my parents always taught me about you got to feed your fellow man. Look, look outside of yourself. So, Erica, when you did this relationship with Grace Presbyterian Church, you came in contact with Nancy Frazier. Take it away. Yes. So, we came in contact with Nancy. Um, Grace Presbyterian Church reached out to Minnie's Food Pantry. And you know what, Nancy, you tell, tell okay. us about. We, um, I think we reached out in, in 2012. And we oh, began yes. first by volunteering. We came over on Saturday morning and we pushed the carts and made the boxes. <laughs> and then some of us fell in love. And so we started volunteering on a weekly basis. Uh, after that, the, the following year, I think we actually put minis into our mission budget and started giving on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. Our children's ministry um, decided in conjunction with some Sunday school lessons that they would make bean soup mixes. Oh, that was great. I remember that. They you know, sold them to the congregation. They sold all of them. They did. Because very we didn't quickly. get a chance to sample it. <laughs> uh, they sold them, and then they gave the proceeds to minis. That's awesome. uh, I think the next year we actually started doing food drives mm -hmm. and we came to you and said what do you really need not just at Thanksgiving but just on a regular basis and so we started quarterly food drives and those were really neat because it gave opportunities for families with small children or seniors to get involved with minis if they couldn't perhaps come and serve. Uh, we have a number of people that come on a weekly basis yes, now. Yes, you're, you're one of the ones that come and actually operate our front desk, so you get that face-to-face -face interaction with mm -hmm. the clients that we serve. So tell me about that. Tell me something that really stuck out to you. How have you connected with some of our clients? I, I would say that every Friday there is something that happens that it's impactful. Wow. Not only wow. is it the relationship with other volunteers, they're just like a family yes. that I get to now see every Friday morning. But there's always somebody special who comes in, the, the grandparents that are now responsible for their grandkids, and yeah. they're trying to make ends meet. And 
uh, maybe they wish they didn't have to be there, or maybe it was the mom that just lost her job, and, and she's hoping she only has to come once or twice, or, or the, the ones that really break my heart are the ones that come up and they need the help, but they want to give back, and so they, yeah. they put the coins or the dollar bills in the, in the jar to help somebody else. So how do you think they feel when they walk through the doors at Minnie's Food Pantry, and we have the red carpet rolled out, and before they even make it up to you, how do you think they feel? when they come into Minnie's. Well, I think that's, you know, that's important. That is important. And mm -hmm. I think Minnie's does an exceptional job of welcoming people, of making them feel at home there. Yes. Uh, we offer coffee and snacks while they're waiting. We give their kids gift, little gift bags of uh, <laughs> the nutrition. Kids the kids' bags. Bag. Yes, gift bags. we sure do. And we hand those out. But they're always, uh, they're always appreciative. Yes. There's never, there's never um, a moment when we don't feel appreciated, even as volunteers, that that they are willing to come back again and again because they need help, but because they feel special. Awesome, they do. And so I want you to tell um, other churches or organizations who's looking for opportunity to give back into the community, just let them know how Minnie's Food Pantry could help them do that. Well, I think Minnie's provides a wonderful opportunity because not only is it is a place where you can do hands-on volunteer work, and mm -hmm. we think that that's really important yes, to get we, out of the community. You actually see where your donor dollars go. Mm -hmm. It's right here in our community, mm -hmm. so you see it in action and works. So it's important to have that place to go to do the work, but it is also vital that Minis has a continual source of funding. Yeah. And so that's why we write a check every month as a church, <laughs> uh, and then do special things like the, the food drives or the uh, Super Bowl of Caring when we that's give that awesome. money over. Yeah, or where we the had kids soup give towers, money. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did have the soup tower recently in the, in the uh, north ex of the church. That's awesome. That's right. I, I love to see pictures of that. Mm -hmm. how, how important, too, is it for the pastors you know, to get involved, because P Pastor Brian Stamper is actually on our board of directors, and he he's going to be on our show um, pretty soon. And so how important is it for the pastor to have a voice? And we only have about 60 seconds, but what would you say to that? Well, it's important for the congregation to see Brian involved, Pastor right. Brian. Uh, it's important for the staff also to be involved. They've actually come over and done volunteer days yes. mm -hmm. at Minis. And so when, when other people see uh, people with responsibility getting involved, they want to join. We've never had a shortage of volunteers no, when it's haven't. time to come to many. <laughs> yeah, that says, well, that says something, first of all, to the ab advocation that you've been doing, right. because if you're excited about coming and you're an ambassador for Minnie's Food Pantry, then that excitement catches on and people want to see what is Nancy so excited about <laughs> when she goes to Minnie's Food Pantry, and especially because you've been coming, like you said, since 2012. That's so that's four years of an excitement. And so I just wanted you to come on because we thank you from our yes. staff and from our board of directors, we thank you for being a voice and for not just being a voice in your church, but also every single week you've come and you've served at Minnie's Food Pantry. And we can't say enough mm -hmm. about how much we appreciate you, Nancy. So thank you so we much for coming. What you're doing also. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Erica, for finding these incredible churches. And if yeah. you have an incredible church or you think your church is incredible, you know what? It says, he that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. So if your church is really great, then I challenge you to log on to <laughs> Minnie'sFoodPantry.org, click on that volunteer link, link and see how you can serve the community. It's been a phenomenal show. You're starting your week off, uh, starting your weekend off at 7.30 in the morning, almost 8. What will you do today to be great? Again, he that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. My name is Dr. Cheryl Action Jackson. I'll see you next week.